So you, can... you guys just bait. Okay, he's set up. There he goes. Oh, that worked. <laughs> that worked out just dandy. <laughs> friends good morning it's the next day thank you all so much for joining in here to the premiere video thanks to all our super chatters that come in and join us here it's a huge appreciation to you and everybody that's new and everybody that's been here since day one and watched this kid transform into a bush beast he makes me so proud this is these are fun times for me friends i envisioned this when i was a younger man with him and it's just pretty cool so Anyway, uh, we come out of the tree, just showed you what happened there. I get on the stump and I knock over this loaded cedar tree. So what's left is the cedar tree still loaded and the fur is hung up in it now, but it won't hit the house. Enjoy. Oh, I see. So friends, um, beginner climbers. Now, oh yeah, you, you said you're making a. I'm making a kit, friends, and I I have talked to a whole bunch of different climbers. Uh, I, I, these guys are in it daily, all day, every day. Yeah. So I wanted to suggest something, Sunny, to somebody that mm -hmm. is into a rope grab instead of my old system. Yeah, the, I mean these are the simplest thing. They are, I, aren't they? These are the. They're in my opinion, they're the way to go. Let me go around this side. So I'm talking about... And then most of them, there's a bunch of different brands. ISC. Yep. I just like the Gibbs one, and this one fits a three-quarter inch strap. Yes. The easiest. Yes. You can't get those purple Petzl ones anymore, but they were awesome. So and a 5.8 then... and a three-quarter will work on this? Or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, three-quarter okay. works. 5 eighths runs a bit smoother. Show us some stuff. So the I want to say before, it comes with this little... Uh, there's like a spring thing. Yeah. It's like a keeper. Yep. And it makes it so you can't do this. See? see how, oh, yes, I do. See how it's running free? Yes, I do. What, do you, all the boys do that? Oh, yeah. If you don't have the spring, you can do this. But if you do have the spring in it, it it'll be, you can stand up with slack. Yes. And it won't run. Yes. But when you're climbing, you can just totally. And then once you sit, you kind of get, you get this weird hip motion. Yeah. That you get kind of used to it yeah you have to slack the line to throw it yeah so so we're not slacking to throw it but you like you can do that but yeah for me when you're climbing like trying to climb fast like doing removals yep. and stuff yeah it's way easier to just go like that yeah you can so it's always you're always kind of moving around and well so it's literally just going like and then when you sit back on it bang bang yeah so you don't can you like one that. hand adjust it like like up yeah. So instead of grabbing the tail and flicking it out, yeah. it just if slides I'm, if through. If I'm slacked out like this, I can just. Okay, that's ridiculous. You gotta lock it, or because most people be. grab this, Sunny, and flick up. Yeah. Well, I what I would do is kind of do like two yeah. hands. <laughs> I've had that off since I got it, so I don't even remember how I. But you do like that, you know. One hand. You'd have to grab the back, but with this, you don't have to grab the back. Is that a? Oh my goodness, that is interesting. And when you're flipping through stuff, like when we wind firm, yep. we leave, you climb through the bottom of the tree. Yes, you and do. And only wind firm the top. Okay. So you can slack this thing out. Yep. Really far. Yep. Throw it up as high as you can. Yes. You can throw it up over, you know, as high as you can get it. Clip it to yourself. Yep. And then just kind of pull yourself like that. And you, you're not, no, so you've actually you know, removed that other... That, you don't have, yeah, that's like you can get over six limbs and then just kind of yeah. pull yourself like that yeah. up to where you're anchored and then just... It makes a ton of so sense. You don't have to go like this and... And two hand, like I use a, a press hook and I have to use two hands. <laughs> I forgot about that. So friends, this is what I'm talking about. This is Bucket style right here, old school. And he, he's not used to this. See, watch. You got to hold and push. I mean, he, it's like riding a bike, but still that's the system we're talking about. 
But look at that. You, you don't yeah. even have to grab the end of the rope. You know how you see guys grab the end of the rope and they tighten themselves closer yeah. to the tree? It takes a sec to get used to if yeah. you're used to like a pressic. Okay. Or, uh, or if you're used to one of these with the spring in it. Yeah, exactly. I, just, I take, took it out right away. Interesting. Because you can do that and you spend so much time. Kind of a bush trick, really. Especially, uh, no, I think a lot of guys probably do it. Do you? No, that's where the spring went. Got it. And then it clipped into, I honestly forget how it worked. But yep. It was there. Okay. You take the spring So out. Ganges is, wants to throw some steam at this box of his too. <laughs> yeah. You can get it at uh, Canadian Tire or wherever. They're, they, they're all different brands. Just make sure it's 28 inches long. 28. You take the guts out of it. Like it comes with like a little shelf. And Look stuff, at this. And you can, it fits perfectly two barred up topping saws. It's nuts. So when you're rattling. Is that your down, spare bar in there? Yeah. My full spare saw and then a spare bar and chain. That's a good idea. And they clip yeah. clamp and one's it's broken. Water, you got to get tight. another one. Yeah, it's watertight. You know, you leave them outside too. You're like we don't, don't have to take it inside at night. Good. You leave them in the truck or whatever. Well, say hi to all your fans, honey. Thank you so much for helping us out. <laughs> See what I got to deal with here? Got me climbing, got me climbing hazard trees for him. Even makes me start a saw for him. Got this thing cranked into the cedar. I'm hoping it'll sneak by that stem that I was just in. Friends, I can't tell you how nice it is to be on a saw right now. This is probably one of the longer runs that I've been on without running saw. And uh, I'm just very happy right now, but I'm going very ginger. But uh, this is a lovely saw, this 572. Hogan has quite a lot to say about it actually later. So friends, what we're cutting into here is, is this now. Hogan's got the top out of it, and I'm cutting now into the compressed, squeezed wood of this hook here, of this bend. You understand what I mean? Like I'm right in the compression now, so it's pinching me and grabbing me. So friends, I really enjoy these premiere videos and I want your feedback in this comment section if you enjoy these and we can do more or whatever. Like, like let me know. I, I read comments, friends. So anyways, this thing's pinching me. I'm just back barring the undercut out of there. There it goes. Flicks it out of there. But uh, I thought I would just voice over a little bit. So friends, you, you can understand what's happening now. So there's a, a regular undercut in it now, but I had to work my way into it because it kept squeezing me. So the, the funny thing is now is... Do you know what would happen if I just cut in the back of this tree? Does anybody know what would happen if I just cut right into the back of this tree right now? What is a high probability? So friends, you can see we bore cut it, but this thing is contorted. It's grabbing me and pinching me in the bore cut. You should always look around the back. I took a shortcut there and just peeked around the front, but looking for your wood, you should be around the back of the tree, not out in front of the face, but it grabs me here. Watch this. I'm just kind of putting my saw in and right there. I felt it grab me. So I just said, okay, we, we got enough here now. It didn't even hit the stem. No. Perfect.
There you go, man. Thank you, buddy. I'll trade you. Oh, okay. Yeah, Thank you, bud. But could you imagine, welcome to the, um, if you're new here and just pulled into the premiere video, welcome to you. These are fun. Listen, friends, this is why I'm so like, hey, oh, ah, it just because I've been in this scenario so many times. And if you cut one wrong limb up there, friends, seriously, and Hogan knows this, that that fir tree would have come over and smashed the house and smashed a hole in the roof or ripped. The, it just would have it would have tagged the house. The guy was actually quite nervous. And uh, we had, it had been there about a week. The tree had been there for about five days, hanging there. <laughs> so take a look at this root system and put together the pieces in your mind why you have to be so focused on doing work like this. Cause you'd be up that tree and do all that work. And if you clip the wrong branch and that tree falls out, you basically just climbed up that tree to cut that tree on that guy's house is what you've done where my mind goes so it did it did go yeah. so that's yeah, the, it so it was completely root rotted yeah. Yeah. so that gone Sonny. Yeah. completely gone and you noticed I bore cut that yeah I was gonna see if it would just kind of break and sit over its thing How'd you make out, neighbor? Nice job. Okay, good. You're good? This is kind of interesting to see Hogan's take on this 572. He had some good things to say. Uh, pretty much what, what a lot of people say is it's a little heavier than the older 372s, which is true, but it is a completely different animal. He enjoyed it. Not a bad little saw, is it? Yeah, they're heavier than a 372. They are heavier, yeah. Friends, good morning. Welcome to the premiere video. If you're new here, welcome. This is my boy in the tree. I trained him since he was freaking 18 years old, maybe even younger, probably younger. Man, oh man, what a trip. Anyway, thank you to all the folks that are here today. Thank you to our super chatters that come in and see us. Let's enjoy this. This is Hogan in the tree. After I knock the stem down, I'll throw you guys up in the GoPro with Hogan. So friends, I want to point out a couple things that every game in the industry, whether it's arboristical work, forestry work, fallen, firewood, and sawmanship is different and they have different tricks and different techniques for every little tree man escapade, so to speak. This is forestry work right here. This is hazard tree removal. But his saw is right at his hand. It's in, it's back down, like he has a system now. That's starting to open up nice, boy. Yeah. I was just telling the, the folks you gotta kinda watch what you're cutting in here too. It can be hairy with three trees up here and stuff's loaded, so, you know. Don't just get crazy with your saw. So, Sonny, does it explain to me is, is, cedar, is the cedar trees doing all the work, isn't it? Yeah, there's some branches off this fir, but it's get that cedar tree's holding the whole weight of that thing up. Do you think. So, this is conversation between you uh, pardon me between Hogan and I and I wanted to share it with you guys um, who know the whole history here do you know what I mean the history of Hogan and I and me breaking him in and all that this is neat neat conversation I have to free myself of a couple things uh, in, to him from down there because I can't see anything I'm asking him questions he's not asking me questions it's, it's, I think I mentioned this before. It's me asking him questions. <laughs> Popping a big fur limb off is not gonna make no difference. 
Like, should, should I really don't think so. Okay, because I would hate to not have it cut up and ready to go and, and make some crazy, like I can't see any limbs that are majorly holding the fur, from the fur. No, there's no weight on this thing uh, from the fur. Okay, it I broke a few limbs, but I can't see that how the fur would be holding this up at all. Good. Yeah. And that cedar, it's like right on top of the cedar. It is. And with the limbs, how they are, like it's like that cedar there is holding the whole thing up. Dude, yeah, so there's no extra load beyond you now. It's like pretty much just the top man out there. No, yeah. I, once I'm like a few more feet to go, I'll be fine. Like there's nothing that could hit me. But, uh, and, and popping a fur limb off won't disturb that fur enough to leave. Nope. Good. Nope. Good. I'm still in mostly dead wood here. If I, I'll take a look when I'm cutting up at the top, but yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take a look when I'm up at the top. Yeah, because if you need, oh, I guess what I'm saying is if there's things helping you hold that fur up before you top them, leave them. Yeah, that's, that's what I was. Perfect. That's what I'll do. Thank you. Friend, you'll notice here he he fires up again. Look how handy his system is. Just flip-flop, flip-flop, saws in his hands, saws on his hip, saws on his hands. The system's working really nicely for him. Anyways, um, watch what happens here. He, he looks and he, he, he was gonna cut that limb, but he, he thinks. And he's been here before. He knows what can happen when a limb catches out at the tip and the butt can end up way in a different spot. Hmm. Shed? Yeah. These are pretty big limbs. I don't want something to grab onto that tree below me. I might just start flipping past them. Well, if you can leave, if you can leave stuff out this side, son, I mean, that's up to you. I think I'm gonna do that just because I don't want to. I don't want to break the shed. <laughs> the GoPro really doesn't do. I wanted to get a wide view, but it, you can see the house down yep. there at the corner of your left eye there. Or the left side of the screen and uh yeah I, I'll, I'll just start this would not have been I'll pretty for that house stuff, if that tree had let stuff. go there it is right there just have a look it, it, it would have smoked it So friends, even these little limbs that are loaded on the cedar, this one here, look, pop, it's loaded, you see? So this is, this is very interesting work. It, it's, you really have to look, you can, you, you have to examine the load, see what he's doing there, those are loaded. And he's just picking this apart, loosening it up, getting it ready to let it go. But it's a thinking game up there, friends. Like you, now he's gonna go two and one around. You see, he's choosing to leave the foliage that he doesn't have to cut, because it's out the other side of the, it's, it's just very interest me, interesting to, for me to sit here and watch this, this go by like this. Um, it's, it's really neat. <laughs>
Now this is kind of what he was talking about there when we were talking is that uh, you know I might want to think about leaving some of these branches now because if you pop it and this whole thing goes before I've got a top cut up and don't shorten it it could be somewhat disastrous so we're gonna start bypassing all the limbs and just cut what's in my face and what I need to go So friends, this is that two-in-one system that I run. He's got two straps, but I have a two-in-one, and, and that's just, the, what he's doing right there is a, an old school system that I love running. Okay, climbers. If you're ever in a situation like this, do you see those limbs there holding up that fur? Not holding up, but they're loaded. Make no mistake, those are loaded, and Hogan knows that. And he's looking at that. This is what I was talking to him about under the ground, when I was on the ground there, and we were having discussion. There's nothing wrong with that kind of discussion. It's healthy, and you're not stepping on anybody's toes, and it's gotta be said, or, or you can't live with yourself. Because if something did happen, you know, so that's what groundmen are an essential part of a climber's existence. They work in unison. And I'll say this wholeheartedly and with every part of my being. The best climbers are men and women who have spent a long time on the ground. It turns them into gentlemen climbers. couple things I want to bring to your attention. These guys don't hang on a saddle all day. They're on their picks all day with all that gear and weight. They're just on their picks. So this is where he starts to think. Any climber would start to think now. You're getting into the, into the meat of this thing. See this? He's thinking. I think uh, I could probably top it or like shorten it right here, but I want to be tied in. Yeah, that's what I think. I can probably walk on it. Looking at the tassel of the cedar top, and I think I can just cut it off. So I'm the guy asking so the I'm questions now from the ground. Wow. Check out his system here, friends. Watch, listen to what he says here. Now, friends, I don't know if you can see with this camera angle, but this is how I do my rope. Because when you're doing forestry and stuff like that, we don't have a groundman. So you can't have your rope dangling. So I put it in a backpack and then hang the backpack off my hip when I'm ready to use it through my legs and uh, up over this big fur limb should do just nicely. I don't want to have my uh, tie in on this side of the tree in case when this goes it rips the limb off. You know there's lots of other limbs down there but that would be kind of spooky. There's a great big one right behind me here on the back side. Perfect. Perfect. Ah. You know, always put your full weight into your system, maybe repel a little bit. See that's still slack. Okay. I almost want to test my weight in this tree while I'm topping it, you know? Friends, you're not missing much what me and him are talking about right now, but I do want to say that this is sketchy here. Take a look at this. What do you, one wrong cut, and you could have just wasted however long you've been doing this uh, to get there. Very sketch ball. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try and swing this just to. 
Yeah, we'll see. It, it would be nice. It, it, any movement at all would be nicer than just letting it go straight where it's leaning. I'm not gonna cut that limb, but I'm gonna try and free up the cedar a bit. And maybe see if I can just reach out from right here. So friends, how this works is you keep all your weight on your, your rappelling line, which is not your scare strap, not that one, the one that's way up above, and it's, you, you wanna just basically float over there and almost not make the tree move at all. So all his weight is on that orange line there to the left of the screen, not his scare strap. And he's just flipping his line around there. He's got it hooked up, there he goes. And uh, he's gonna be all set up put his undercut in, you saw this on the last video, but this is more of what he went through. While I'm, I'm tied in, both of these tie-ins are on that tree. I can stand on this one like this and try and squeak an undercut that way. I think it should work. Okay, I'm putting my undercut in now. Uh, no, I've got my strap and my rope in that tree just to get the undercut. It's just, it'll be easier to get my undercut in this way. Yep, and then I'll go back to that tree and just reach over for the back cut. These boys run hungrier acres out there. They want to be eating wood fast, especially limbing all day long. So they don't want to be waiting around for their saw to cut nothing. So they run a hungrier acre. Just dandy. So this is what she looks like now, the top side of it. It was only touching a few limbs off this tree, which is nice. 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna reach over and cut a piece off hopefully leave some wood over on that side and have her peel out and then she'll be safe to cut from the ground The cedar, I'm, I can't believe it didn't break that cedar off. I, uh, I'm impressed. Yeah, me too. Because I'll bet you we cut that cedar down, that fur's going with it. Yeah. You think that fur will roll out of there? The only thing I'd be worried about is it hitting the stem of this one. Like, I don't think. Yeah, no, I hear you. I don't know if it would roll, I don't think it would roll out of there. But the only thing is, ah, you know, it'll probably, it might graze this tree and bounce off it. It would just suck if this tree got fully hung up into this tree up against the stem. Yeah, no, that, that, I, I think the way to do this now, Sonny, is let this cedar go. I think so too. Yeah, come on down. Okay. Yeah, if you try that same, kind of the same thing as what I did with the top, Okay, well, I'll see you on the ground. Yep. Good job. Thank you. Pardon? That cedar won't reach anything, will it? Uh, it's no. The, same height as the, fur now, isn't it? the cedar's the same height as the fur. It is in front of the. No, I... no it wouldn't reach the house. From here. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. Just watch for hangers. There's kind of. I'll try and actually. I'll try and pull some hangers out of it before we do this. Yeah. If if you could uh, dress those ones up there a bit or whatever. Yeah. I'll I'll try and reef some hangers out of this thing. The hangers? Yeah. Oh, I guess it's, they're quite out in front of where you're going to be cutting anyways. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good on the stump here, son. Okay, I'm just trying to look around for any other ones yeah. that are, might end up staying. Uh, you could take my flip lines. Here, I got you. That one's attached to the belt. Yeah. Let's not be standing out of there. I'll just unplug my rope here. You might have yeah, I put a Dutchman in the bottom. I saw you did I, something there. I put a Dutchman in the bottom of the cut. Yeah. Like, you know, like cut it up that way yep, so it would land and then and put a, a big dutchman on it i saw that yeah jamie taught me that and then uh so it la it, it it came into effect it did yeah. yeah and then yeah it came out real smooth it didn't like i was I saw that you know it, it just kind of rolled right out of there it pulled about that much wood but i, I looked at the stump on the ground so yeah there's the finished product friends all zippled up and i'm glad that you didn't cut them back limbs off son yeah there's that little fur that had those limbs going yeah. underneath it it would have sat right on it <laughs> Shed. And I got to cut a tree. Yeah. And we do have horrifying root rot here. But as you can see, friends, this is very interesting to note something.
These big side roots, here, let me back out. Just understand what I'm saying here. Look at, there's no root on the back side of the tree holding the tree back, son. Yeah. It got torn off it right away. Hey, it's right there. There is, there's no root. It's gone. It's like it almost tried to curl under or something. So there was nothing holding this to the bank except it's two big side roots. See those two big side roots, friends? That, that's a big freaking root there, but nothing on the back side. Tore it right off. So that's what you get. Probably down in there somewhere. Oh, and there you are. Well, friends, I gotta be honest, friends. That was, uh, that was one of the funnest days I've had in a long, long time. Listen, if you just finished watching this um, premiere video with us, thank you so much. Your comments in the last video, friends, <clears throat> right in the old feely, right in the old feely pumper. I appreciate you. Those who super chatted in this video, if you did, thank you all so much. I'll probably get back to that and go in and check everything out. But just thank you all so much for being part of this. And uh, the comments on yesterday's video were pretty intense and I appreciate everybody's love. And it, it was so fun working with my boy again. Work hard, friends. Be honest and be kind. And start now. If you're a young man, start now. Over and out. Is running. This is his bush setup. He just jumps into her. These boys climb with corks. The show's on. First episode comes out today, February 5th. Timber Titans. On Discovery Channel. On Discovery. So that is actually very, very funny. Yeah, you'll see me and all the guys that I work with out, out in the bush. This is, our, this, is, thing. this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. This doing is doing our thing. This is cool.